Lakeland Currents, your public affairs program for North Central Minnesota. Produced by Lakeland PBS with host Ray Gildow. Production funding for Lakeland Currents is made possible by Bemidji Regional Airport, serving the region with daily flights to Minneapolis-St. Paul International Airport. More information available at BemidjiAirport.org. Closed captioning for Lakeland Currents is sponsored by Niswa Tax Service. Tax preparation for businesses and individuals. Online at NiswaTax.com. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to Lakeland Currents. We're glad you could join us this evening. Tonight, we're going to be talking a little about bond issues, and specifically tonight, we're talking about the Staples Motley bond issue that will be coming up this May. And my guest this evening is Ron Bratley, who is the interim superintendent at the Staples Motley Schools. Welcome aboard, and any person who's a superintendent trying to get a bonding bill passed is a man who's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm an interim, so, you know, <laughs> uh, my investment is just to get her done and move on. Well, tell us a little bit about your background, Ron, because I know you've been a superintendent in other school districts, and what is your background? Well, I started my uh, uh, educational career in Flint, Michigan as a math teacher. I was in Flint for five years, uh, and it was during the riots, and I was a small town farm boy from Detroit Lakes, so uh, that didn't set very well. Uh, my wife was uh, uh, lucky enough to meet me there, and so we moved back to Minnesota, to the, uh, and uh, been a superintendent in Minnesota for 53 years, including this year. So I'm pretty seasoned about that. I guess. I retired in 2007 from Elk River School District as assistant superintendent, and my main job there was building schools. Really? I built about $250 million worth of new schools and renovations. So that and, was the best job I ever had. And how is it that you became the interim superintendent at Staples Motley? Well, mm -hmm. this is the, uh, actually this is the fifth interim I've done since I retired in 2007. And uh, I got a call from a friend of yours, Bruce Lund, and asked me if I was interested, and and uh, just evolved from there. And uh, basically, I said, oh, two years is is it? I'm my wife, I can't afford a divorce, so I think I better retire <laughs> for real." I can remember reading in the Chronicle of Higher Education in the early '90s about how difficult it is going to become to find quality superintendents, quality college presidents quality principals in the high school and the elementary schools, and that's really come to fruition, hasn't it? It's getting to be very, very difficult to find people that want to do these jobs. They're not easy jobs. Being a superintendent, as you know, I've never been a superintendent, but uh, it's a very, very challenging job, and, it, and it's, it's, a, it's a shame we're not getting more young, talented people who want to do these kinds of jobs. So you often fill in because some of these districts do have a challenge finding replacements, don't you? Correct. Yes. And um, this will be your last term with Staples in? I promised my wife this would be my last year as a superintendent and that I will retire for real. <laughs> the last time you're taking out a job. Yes. Well, I know in Staples and Motley, I think they merged those two school communities together, I believe in the early 90s. Correct. And uh, at the time, I was a, a college vice president here working on both campuses in Brainerd and Staples. So I remember some of that period, but I wasn't actually involved with it very much. But I do remember an opportunity that we missed, and that was, and I don't remember, I know you would know what the, the legislation was, but there was legislation out there that allowed communities that want to pair the opportunity to build new schools. And I don't remember the details, but Staples and Motley, I think maybe more on the Staples side, turned down that opportunity to build a brand new school, mm -hmm. which has led up to some of the challenges that you have now, hasn't it? Yes. And you said that's kind of a, you're, you're going to approach this kind of a, from a two-pronged approach. Mm -hmm. One is called, uh, you're going to be talking about your athletics, uh, academics, and what was the third one? Uh, activities. Activities. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about that campaign, because it is kind of a PR campaign in a sense, but a lot of times schools don't do a good enough job telling about the good things that they do. That's exactly right, and that's, uh, that's an initiative that we, we started last year, is to tell our story. Tell about the good things, the things that, that students are achieving. You're telling about, you know, for example, the FFA uh, has got state and national officers from Staples Motley. That's, that's a, quite an achievement. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of other success stories that we need to tell. 
And in education, we don't brag very much. We kind of keep those things hidden some, mm -hmm. to some degree. So that's one uh, part of the Build 2170 is to kind of tell our story. Mm -hmm. And that's the, I call that the A-team. The A-team? Yeah. And then do you have people, just to make a comparison, in 2017, Brainerd passed three referenda, which is incredible, I think, in this mm -hmm. day and age. Yes. But they also had probably a, a different funding mechanism, uh, maybe a different um, level of money that's going to be committed from local people than, than you might be dealing with. But to have three referendums pass in one year like Rainer did is just an amazing thing. And you said before we went on air that there's quite a few districts looking at floating some bonding issues this, this coming year. Well, actually, uh, if you, we look around the neighboring districts of Staples Motley, every district around us has either built or is in the process of building. Uh, Pillager, Verndale, uh, Wadena, uh, and, and Brainerd. They have built. And Pequot, too, I know. Pequot, great. Right. So there's been, you know, buildings are getting old, mm -hmm. and education is changing, and, and so we need to kind of get up to date, so to speak. Mm -hmm. So currently, what are you dealing with for buildings now? How, how are you structured so that you're, st you're struggling with the cost uh, right. uh, for sure? Operating costs. We have three buildings. We have two buildings in Staples and one building in Motley. Uh, we're currently studying uh, the process of going from three buildings to two next year because of the costs involved. Uh, just making that adjustment will save uh, over a hundred thousand dollars just in transportation and then we also we will, will appreciate up to four hundred thousand of other uh, efficiencies but it's not only efficiencies uh, but it will be providing better uh, more efficient uh, expand our courses for instance music just by making that adjustment we will pick up between five and six hours of additional music classes and and activities that we don't have now because we our teachers won't have to travel and that uses up time so, so that's an example you're looking you'll be looking to to actually have a referendum in May of 2019 is that correct the, so this coming May right and that's um, do you have groups that are going out and working with people and explaining how this is operating and what you're trying to do well, right now, we're at this stage, we're, we're doing some surveying and we're doing, uh, we're establishing a steering committee. Uh, but after the first of the year, yes, we'll be developing, uh, you know, there'll be a vote yes committee at some point, I would guess. There's already been some interest mm -hmm. in that and, and, and kind of coordinating that. So we certainly will welcome that opportunity. But it will, it'll be, it's a process going through until May. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we're doing a lot of our homework now and uh, we'll continue to do that. So you said, regardless of whether the bond would pass or not in this coming May, you still have a plan to go down to two buildings. Right. And what is that plan? What are the two buildings you're looking at? Well, it would be the Staples Elementary and the Staples High School uh, that will be our property, and, and we will uh, have a K-3 and a 412 or a 512 and a K-4 program. We haven't quite got all those logistics, logistics put together yet. Mm -hmm. um, and then the Motley building, I am working with the city of Motley as far as uh, if they can use the building for other purposes, uh, repurposing the building, mm -hmm. if you will. Uh, th their city offices are limited and they have some other needs. But we're also going to, uh, if, if, if in case Motley takes, the city of Motley takes that building on, we need to rent uh, some space for early childhood, uh, for the Head Start and some of those other programs. And so uh, we're going to develop a partnership between us. And uh, So that building would still have kids in it during different events? Most likely, yep. And some interest, there's a lot of interest uh, in daycare. Uh, you know, there's a shortage of daycare right mm -hmm. now. Uh, we're also looking at some other opportunities that will help the, dis the city of Staples, because they don't have a senior citizen center. In they, Motley. In Motley, I'm sorry, yeah. mm -hmm. in Motley. And so there's some, there's some real advantages for the city of Motley to take advantage of now, some you'll, opportunities. You'll have probably some of the same challenges that Brainerd did, in that, in, or maybe almost more Pillager than Brainerd, in, the, in that Pillager's last bond referendum did not pass. 
and there's a pretty good contingency of people who live on the lakes mm -hmm. who do not have kids or mm -hmm. maybe even grandkids. So getting those folks to buy in is a, you've got Shaman on Lake Alexandria, right. south of Motley. So you've got some of the same issues to, to meet those challenges. And, and with your experience, I, I can't imagine there's probably hasn't anything that you haven't seen when you're trying to deal with this. And so you're really trying to encourage people to make an investment in the future of their communities as well, whether they have kids or not. Right. And when you're looking at this new plan, what is it basically trying to do? Are you going to uh, add on to the buildings in town in Staples or what, what is it that you're looking to do? Well, the plan right now, uh, which is subject to change as we move down the road, but right now we're going to uh, utilize the elementary site, Staples Elementary site as a K-12 site. And that's, t Pillager has kind of the same situation mm -hmm. and in other districts. Um, so we'll be using that site. And one of the main reasons for that is all the athletic fields and such are on the, on the uh, elementary site. Mm -hmm. And so it just makes sense that we utilize those. We've looked and that at- that is a huge expense. Yes. If you have to start developing football, baseball, track fields. That's a very big piece of money. We did an extensive study of all three sites. You know, what is what are the pluses and minuses? We even looked at a site in between Motley and Staples, a con right in mm -hmm. right in the middle. Mm -hmm. uh, we called it mile marker 111. But when you start to develop fields, like you just uh, alluded to, you know, then all at once you're looking at 10, 20 million dollars more yeah, in expense. It's and a big it's, deal. Yeah, it's just didn't wasn't going to work. So if you moved out and then you would add on to the North Elementary School, which is on the north side of Staples, for right. people who don't know, um, what would happen then to the old high school in Staples and the auditorium? Well, the auditorium, we're, uh, again, we're looking at that. We're working with the city of, of Staples. Uh, they have a community center that has a pool and some meeting rooms. It's, uh, it's in need of repair, significant amount of repair. And so we're having conversations of, uh, you know, should we look at the, putting a pool onto the high school and how would that work? Uh, pools, as you know, are expensive to build, but they're also expensive to operate. Mm -hmm. So how, in order to justify having a pool at the high school, it's got to be part of our program. So we're working with the city of Staples to see, you know, how do we do this? Uh, is it a community pool? Is it a, is a competition pool? You know, all of those mm -hmm. questions need to be answered. So would you tear any of the old high school down or w would that be repurposed too? I think uh, the majority of the high school would probably be demolished because we, it's you know, old. part of it is 1935. Yeah, there's no know, insulation in the and, walls or anything. And 1960 and so on and so forth. The auditorium, uh, that's another situation where we need to work with the city. The city has some interest in that, uh, utilizing that and maybe bringing in productions and such. And if it's not part of the school district, then they have a little more flexibility as far as you know how they can utilize it. What would happen if the bond issue doesn't pass? Then would you sort of be stuck with the two buildings that you're looking at moving into in 2020, I guess it would be, or 2019? Well, it's going to pass, so we don't have oh, to okay. look at that. <laughs> well, it, you know, then we have to regroup. We have to regroup and see, uh, you know, what is, is it? Was it too much money? Uh, did we not do a good job of selling it? To, what are the options? Mm -hmm. and, and quite honestly, uh, the three principals and myself are having discussions of, about that because that certainly is something that we need to be prepared for. Now, and maybe you're not prepared to talk about that today, but when you're looking at the average household, mm -hmm. have you determined what it will cost the average household yet? Well, right now we're using the number of sixty million dollars for, for the, the project, project for the overall project. That's a, you know that's an estimate at this point in time, but basically uh, on a on a hundred thousand dollar home, that would be uh, about thirty two dollars a month, uh, and. Now there's going to be some changes. We had a new hospital, as you're well aware of, mm -hmm. and that's going to uh, boost up the property values, the taxable value in the school district, and that will have a positive effect on the taxpayers. But I, I don't have those numbers yet, mm -hmm. so I'm using numbers from 2016, 
and uh, that's kind of dangerous. But you know, those are things we have to look at. But in at. April, before the bond, you'll be oh, putting we'll out lots I of should, information. I should know that, that in the next sure. two weeks. Sure. You know, really pinpoint it. Mm -hmm. And are you have you gotten much data on mar marketing data on what the uh, population growth might be in the Staples Motley communities? Do you do you see that as staying flat, or do you see it growing slightly, or? You know, uh, it's pretty stable right now. Uh, I know that uh, I've been working with the hospital uh, people, uh, and they really are in need of housing in Staples Motley. They're uh, trying to attract uh, new doctors and, and, and medical personnel. And you know, when people are coming into a community, they, they look at the school and they look at housing. Mm -hmm. And we don't really have any housing available. So I know there's an effort in Staples to, to start looking at getting some housing that, or at least available land for, for people to move in. Mm -hmm. So that's gonna affect the future. Right now, it's pretty much stable. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, the, the, the community is, uh, as a whole is, is uh, getting older. And so our, we have a slight decline in student enrollment. So over the next, I've done some projections, and over the next 10 years, we could lose somewhere between 30 and 50 students total. But if housing comes in, that could change the whole we could thing, change, it, it could go the other direction. Yeah, absolutely. Easily. Yeah. And the hospital, for people who don't know Staples Motley area, the hospital is a very large employer. Uh, a lot of those people, though, live in Baxter or Wadena, and this interesting because you come to Essential Health and Brainerd and a lot of those people come from Staples. <laughs> so we're changing up mm -hmm. and down the Highway 10, 210 corridor and there's a lot of, a lot of people transferring around. But uh, what, what are some of the things that you've got planned in the new building? Are you looking at new gymnasiums and mm -hmm. do, you have a new, do you have a theater con concept at all there? Or wh what's basically your basic plan looking like at this stage? At, at this stage, we're looking at six gyms in that, in that building and we're also uh, trying to have a floor plan that will facilitate people coming in, Growth. senior citizens and, and so on during mm -hmm. the day at the same time and other activities are going on. Uh, so we, we really want it to be a community-centered building, uh, not that it's a community center, right. but that there are, are activities available uh, for, and especially if we have the pool, you know, that's another factor. So we're mm -hmm. trying to plan that, uh, we, that we can separate the building, but yet utilize the whole building, because that you, you want to use it 12, 15 hours a day, mm -hmm. not just four or five. Right, just for school days. Yeah. So would you be building to the south of the elementary school then? Is that the direction? Uh, actually, we would be building to the north and to the west. To the north and the west. So it'd be almost kind of like a box. Okay. Uh, and, and a little bit, uh, well, not to the south. It'd be to the west and to the north okay. primarily. Yeah. And, and if when the referendum passes, yes. what is your timeline for actually starting to have things happen? Well, um, if the bond passes in 19, we will go out for bids uh, in January of 20. And so we will, then the bids would come in, uh, you know, like April, March, April. And if we're organized enough, we'd like to start doing some renovations and construction in 20. But realistically, the building would probably not open until 22. I see it that we would be phasing it in different parts of the building as we go, but fully operational in 22. So using some of the old buildings in the process right. of transition. Yes. A transition. We'll right. use the buildings as a transition. Now you say six gymnasiums. Is that six new gymnasiums? Yes. And not counting the one that's at the elementary school now. Right. Yeah, because that's not a very big gymnasium. That's not a, that's, no. no it's and that's small. not going to be a gym. That'll be repurposed. Right. You know. For the program. And, and who are the architects that you're working with on this project? We're working with WSN. Oh, out of the architect. Yeah, yeah. Okay. They've, and are you giving any consideration to energy conservation and energy alternatives? Well, when I was at Elk River, I got real involved in green schools and, uh, and we, uh, we built several LEED certified oh, sure. buildings there. Mm -hmm. um, so we're going to use, I don't know that this is going to be a LEED building, but we're going to uh, build it according to LEED requirements so that it will be as in energy efficient as possible. We're gonna have in good indoor air quality. 
a lot of natural daylight is what we're planning and, and just making it a real sound educational building for good learning. Now, being that we're in January here now, uh, <laughs> what is the plan? Is it planned to have a new superintendent on board then July 1 of 2019? Is that kind of the, yes. the plan? So you would step out of the picture then and yes. this new person would take yes. over that in that role. So you would have all of the roll up your sleeve work done and if it passes, this person can come in and... Well, th there's been some discussions uh, since I've, uh, based on my background in construction mm -hmm. that I might stay on for just that component on a part-time basis. Because mm -hmm. uh, you have the experience. Yeah. It? yeah. And so um, we'll see how that goes. But... Uh, yeah, it would be pretty nice for a person to come in and see the building and help actually, uh, you know, design the building mm -hmm. in the final stages. No, I, I know your board is made up of Staples people and I think just probably one Motley person mm -hmm. right now. Do you have any sense for how the Motley community feels about this? Do you have any feel for that at all? You know, uh, maybe the negative people aren't talking to me, but uh, I'm getting a real positive feel from throughout the district. I mean... There's advantages, you know, there's a lot of people who live in Motley that uh, have complained that I've got kids in three different buildings yeah. in two different towns. It sure would and be nice if it was athletics, one stop. Athletics into that and they got yeah. a bus back yeah. and forth. Yeah. I know that's a real headache for parents. And, really and no community wants to lose their school. Right. And that's why we're looking at repurposing it and, and making a, a situation for the city that will be helpful for everyone. So. The planning you're doing really is involving both the cities heavily, isn't yes. it? Yes. And the hospital. Yes. Because the hospital also serves Motley and the, the whole area there. And yeah. there's some... And then we have Sourcewell that's located right there, too, right. that are looking for employment. Sure. And always looking for employees. Sourcewell is a, um, the old region concept where right. they were providing expertise to school districts, but they also do um, competitive purchasing. bidding and yep. purchasing for nonprofits. And I think they're doing over a billion dollars yes. in a year in, in business there. So that's an amazing yes. resource and a good place for, they pay, pay well too, don't they? Yes. That's good. So they're involved with your planning a little bit too? Yeah. We're so, trying to involve everybody in the, you know, the business community and, and the uh, uh, residents. It's so their school. Would, would this involve uh, much for new streets? Would you, would you have to do... A fair amount of work to redesign the streets around that area. Well, one of the things we're, you know, schools are always looking at safety and security, and so we will. We're, our plan right now is that we'll be closing off some streets so that uh, we'll be reconfiguring, you know, where buses come in and where parents come in, to make it as safe as possible. And also with athletic fields, there now we have streets that we'll probably block off. We've been in discussion with the city on how we could. Uh, do you know mm -hmm. hap, make this happen I've talked with Lane Larson I know you mm -hmm. know Lane well too yes. and I know they're putting a great deal of time into building safety mm -hmm. because unfortunately that's a big part of our school business now is having our kids be safe so that gives if you get this bond referendum through that gives you an opportunity to sort of start from scratch and exactly. build this uh, as safely as possible which is a very positive thing too. So, did, did, and law enforcement is one of our partners. We're including them in the in the design too because it's important. You bet. Now, did you say there was it would be a theater involved? I, I didn't remember if you said. You know, that's that or again, not. we're not sure. Uh, it depends just, on what happens to the other right. place. We're measuring uh, we're measuring the sentiment of as far as the keeping the old one, or it's not that old. Uh, and utilizing that or having a performance center in the high school. We prefer to have the performance center in the high school because obviously you don't have to transport right. students and have them running around. They can, and then have like a 600 or 700 seat theater. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah. there's a lot of, uh, lot of questions to be answered yet, and but I it's think, exciting. I think one of the nice things for you too is you don't have to displace homeowners. Right. Your area is all pretty open. That's been a little bit of a challenge. I know here in Brainerd, there's been a number of homeowners that are having to relocate and it's created some hard feelings in places, but you've got all that property pretty much uh, under control already, don't you, in, yes. in that area? And so that's really nice. That was one real strong point to having it at the elementary site that we mm -hmm. didn't have to disturb any uh, you know, property owners mm -hmm. at all. 
So, so do you see a, a new facility changing how you approach the curriculum? Oh, yes. How do you see that changing? Well, you know, we're going to build flexibility into this building so that when we build it in 22, we got to keep in mind that in 25 or 30, it may be a whole different way that we approach education. So flexibility is going to be built in uh, to the building uh, as much as we can, just so that we're prepared for down the road. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I've already met with the teachers and asked them, what do you want to see? What do you need? What do you see five, ten years from now? We're also going to have an emphasis on CTE, Career and Technical Education. Oh, that's great. Uh, we're partnering with CLC, the college, uh, to say, you know, should we be partnering on some of this? You've got a lot of nice equipment up in your facility. We don't want to duplicate that. Mm -hmm. So can we ha establish some type of partnership? And it's right down the road. It's mm -hmm. not very far. Mm -hmm. So I think we're, we're thinking smarter, not harder, mm -hmm. and trying to involve everybody and, and get the best a possible learning situation as possible. So if people want to find out more without necessarily having to call you or to mm -hmm. call someone from the school district, do you have a website that they can go to and find out information about this? Or what, what is that? Uh, well, it's our, our, it's our school website, and in, under the school website we have Build 2170 which has got the A-team that we talked about, and then it's also got the construction, or the B-team, the bricks and mortar. So that's where there'll be information as far as tax impact, as far as what we're doing, what, what's it look like, you know, where are we in this process. So there's where people can get their information. And what is that website called? It's a, uh, just isd2170.k12.mn.us. Okay, so that's the really the place to get almost anything answered that you would need. And then we're also going on social media too. We're going to utilize social media uh, to get out the word. Facebook and Facebook and, and Twitter and all of the, those type of things. So. Well, I wish you the best. Um, I know from, I'm being, that I live in Staples. We have some really, really old buildings there. It would be a great addition to the whole yeah. area if that could happen. So. Good luck on that. Okay. Thanks for jumping on the show with us. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ron. You bet. You've been watching Lakeland Currents, where we're talking about what you're talking about. I'm Ray Gildow. So long until next time.